So we're live. Hello. Welcome to APH Excel Academy Detec Deductive Detective Skills. I'm going to, we have a couple of people coming in and we're going to let everyone get in here. This is our Saturday morning or afternoon, if you're on the East Coast, Virtual Excel Academy. Going to give a few more minutes just to let everybody get in. If you have a release that you sent us, you can turn your camera on if you like. If you have not sent us a release but would like to, you can message me in the chat and I can get that to you. Okay, looks like we've got a bunch of people coming in. This is very exciting. So this is Deductive Detective Skills for Virtual Excel Academy. And I think Oh, here come some more people. Yay. Always good to have more people. I think I will go ahead and turn it over to our presenter. Today is Veronica. Are you going to be talking about Sherlock Holmes, I wonder. I am talking about Sherlock Holmes. Super exciting. Yes. Go ahead. Thank you. Welcome. I'm waving hello to all of you. I have a question. Are you good at making decisions? Are you someone who makes a decision? and then changes your mind? Or when you make a decision, do you stick with it? We're going to talk about how to make decisions today. I want to welcome those who are live. Hello, I'm waving at you. And I want to welcome those who are watching later the recording of this video. My name is Veronica. I am a former elementary teacher. Fourth grade was my favorite. Hello, Samuel. I'm also a homeschool mom. I have three children who are a junior, a, so a freshman, and a sixth grader. I also am a new online teacher. I see people, everyone saying hello, good morning. It's nice to have you here. I also have a podcast. So I've been changing and experimenting lately with some new ideas and I've had to make decisions. Is this good? Can I do this? So I'm excited to help you improve your decision-making skills. I'm seeing Casey saying hi. I'm seeing Donnie. I also see Cindy and Anne. It's nice to have everyone here. I am a white woman. I have shoulder length, straight, stick straight brown hair. I'm only 5'4", so I'm not super tall or super short. I don't have any glasses on. And today, I'm wearing a navy blue shirt. Welcome to class. 
I'm excited. I hope you're excited. Just a few things to remind you. I'm going to need your participation. I need you to raise your digital hand or type in the chat box because we're going to ask questions today. And if you don't answer or ask questions, it's going to be a very boring class. So I see you typing in the chat box. Don't forget, use your name. So it's easier for me rather than saying Samsung Galaxy 5.4. It helps to have names. And the most important, hi, Donnie. It's nice to see you and talk to you. The most important thing, have fun. If you don't have fun, if you get stuck trying to figure out our riddle, you won't have as much fun. Don't get discouraged if you don't know the answer right away. The idea is to have to think and it takes time to think. Are you ready? I'm going to share my screen. Let me pull it up. I have to take a second to pull in my PowerPoint. I'm trying to get it to start there. Now, I want to know, we're gonna use the chat box. Are you a cat person or a dog person? Using the chat box, start typing in C for cat or D for dog. Let me watch and see. Hmm. Going to stop out. I'm back out of the PowerPoint so I can see the chat box. Oh, Donnie says dog, Samuel says dog, Casey says dog, Monica says dog, Ellie says cat, Sydney says dog. Wow, and Cindy says cat. Wow, you're all more dog people than cats. I actually have a dog and two cats. I like all animals. Let me share my screen again. I'm trying to figure out how to see my chat box and my screen at the same time. Let's talk about our objectives for today. Our first objective. I can work with others to solve the riddle. Today, you are going to work as a team, listen to what people are saying, remember what people are saying. It will help you solve the mystery, our riddle. Our second objective, let me there. Number two, I can solve the riddle by asking yes or no questions. That's going to be important. When we get to the riddle, I can only answer yes or no. I might also say it doesn't matter or restate the question. But you get to ask the questions today. Objective number three, I can list the important and necessary information 
to improve my critical thinking skills. Hmm. When you make decisions, you have to learn how to forget or not use some information. Sometimes we have too much information. For example, let me change the screen. If I'm going to describe my house, which information is not necessary? In the chat box, answer that question. My brown house has three bedrooms, 15 windows, a green roof, a purple front door, and two cats. Think about it. What information is not necessary to describe my house? Yes, Samuel, two cats doesn't describe my two, describe my house. Casey, yes, the two cats. That doesn't tell you what my house looks like. Good, I'm seeing answers. Yes, Lacey, she also said the two cats. Good. Let's try another one. If I'm describing living in Alaska and I lived there for 18 years, if I'm telling you what life is like in Alaska, what living in Alaska looks like, was it A or B? A, my husband was born in Michigan. Does that tell you about life in Alaska? Or B, is it, it can get too cold to snow? Hmm. Think about it and then answer in the chat box. Good. Uh, yes, Lacey, we don't need to know about my husband. If you want to know about life in Alaska, it's B. It can get too cold to snow. Yes, and it really does get too cold to snow. So in December, we did not get much snow. Good job. I'm seeing people who are using their critical thinking skills and deciding what information is necessary and not necessary. Let me stop sharing my screen and ask you, why are critical thinking skills important? You can type in the chat box or raise your digital hand. Why? Why is it necessary? Think about it. Hi, Veronica, this is, this is Robin, and we have a hand up. Lacey has raised her hand. Lacey, I am going to give you permission to go ahead and talk. So go ahead and hit that space bar and answer your question. Hi, Lacey. usually takes about one second. Oh, there you go. There's um, hello. 
Hi, Lacey. So, so the answer to your question is that critical thinking is good because it um, helps you understand what the answer is because if the question is, or it helps you understand what information is it needed. Yes, it helps us decide what information isn't needed. Very good, Lacey. I'm giving you a thumbs up. I'm giving you a uh, thank you, thumbs up back. You're welcome. Is there anyone else who would like to answer why are critical thinking skills important? All right, this is Robin from the background. I see that Samuel has a hand up. Samuel, I'm gonna give you permission to talk. I, Casey's answering in chat. And then Donnie, I'm also gonna give you permission to talk. I think that one went through. So Samuel, go ahead and unmute. Oh, I think you're already there, Samuel. Um, I think that, um... It's because you need you need to know what information is not needed and what information you need to solve the problem. Yes, because good job. Because some information is useless and some information you need to solve the problem. Yes, excellent. I am clapping for your answer. Good job. All right, okay. Samuel. Thank you so much. Next, we've got Donnie. Donnie, you can unmute and share your answer. Um, show people know what you're talking about. Hi, Donnie. Oh, it does show people you know what you're talking about. That is an excellent answer. Donnie, I'm giving you two thumbs up. Okay. Okay, teacher Veronica, go ahead and get on back. You've got some good answers in chat. You can All right. Yes, Casey says critical thinking skills help you solve a problem. Yes, Casey, good job. Thumbs up to you. Sean says critical thinking skills are important because it helps you correctly analyze. Look at that nice big word, a situation and decide what information isn't relevant. Yes, Sean, thumbs up. We are going to use some of those skills today. Let me go back to share my screen. And I'm going to give you, as I'm pulling my screen in, some questions we might ask, when you're making a decision, you might ask yourself, what does this mean? That's a question you will ask when you make decisions. Or you will evaluate, is this right? or good? If I'm asking a question about Alaska, will you think about a tropical rainforest? Probably not because that's not right or a good question about Alaska. If we're problem solving, you might ask, what is the solution to the problem? If the problem is water is leaking all over my floor, the solution might be find the leak and fix it. Or we'll use strategic thinking. How do we achieve our goal? 
today, our goal will be to solve a mystery. How will we achieve that goal? We will ask questions. I'm showing you a number one. Number two, I'm holding up two fingers. We'll work together as a team. Creative thinking. You are going to need to be a creative thinker today. Creative thinking asks, what new thing will help us achieve our goal? Hmm, you might have to change what you're thinking based on how other people are asking questions. We'll also need to use decision making. Decision making is something you're doing every day, all day long. You're often asking yourself which option is best. When you got up this morning, you picked clothes to put on. Or when you came on the camera, came on your computer, is this the best time to get on and get ready for class? Or should I wait a little bit? Probability. What are the chances this will happen? That's a question you're asking. Maybe before you go outside, you wonder, think, remember what the weather is supposed to be. What are the chances it will rain? Your decision would be take an umbrella or leave an umbrella. You also have to use logic. Does this make sense? All of these are questions you're going to use today as we solve the riddle. But also, you're using these questions all day long as you're going about your day. Now, when you think, we often have two ways of thinking. These are big words. One is called inductive thinking. The other is called deductive thinking. Inductive thinking and deductive thinking are similar. I want to help you understand how they work a little different. Inductive thinking, let me share my screen again and find the, let me find the right slide. Inductive thinking, usually goes from a specific observation to a general conclusion. When you use inductive thinking, you use words like probably or likely. Oftentimes, inductive thinking is more of an argument. This is a weak argument or a strong argument. Probably, likely, weak, strong. Keep those words in mind as we look at some examples. 
Let me read example number one. Joey likes sand. Joey, oops. Joey likes to build sand castles. Joey likes to play in the ocean. Joey collects seashells. Would Joey prefer the beach or the woods? I'll be quiet in the chat box and those who are watching the recording answer. Do you think Joey would like the beach type B or Joey would like the woods? Yes, Lacey said B, Casey said B, Sydney said beach, Donnie said B, Samuel said the beach, Ellie said the beach. Yes, based on what Joey likes, we can assume he probably likes the beach. Good, Sean said beach. Let's try another one. Let me switch the slide. Here, I ordered a vanilla milkshake at McDonald's on Monday. I ordered a vanilla shake from Burger King on Tuesday. Therefore, on Wednesday, what flavor of shake will I order from Chick-fil-A? In the chat box, write the first letter of the flavor you think I'll get. Yes. I'm seeing vanilla V in the chat box. Good job. Based on Monday and Tuesday, I ordered vanilla. It's probably likely I will order a vanilla shake on Wednesday. Good. Now, the problem with inductive thinking, sometimes it can lead you to the wrong answer. Let's look at this example. Joey likes the beach. Joey is a boy. Billy is a boy. Therefore, all boys like the beach. Hmm. Think about that. Joey likes the beach and Joey's a boy. Billy is a boy. Therefore, all boys like the beach. I want you to think and the recording, and now, why is this a wrong conclusion? Samuel said false. Samuel is correct. Why is this a false conclusion? Can you raise your digital hand and tell me why? All righty, Samuel's got a hand back up. So Samuel, you can go ahead and unmute, followed by Lacey. Lacey, you will come after Samuel. Go ahead first, Samuel. Um, I think that um, just because um, Joey and Billy, just because the both of them are boys, doesn't mean that they like the same things. They can like different things as well. Yes, excellent, Samuel. Two thumbs up. 
Lacey. Um, so I do agree with what Samuel said, but I would also just want to add that if it says to if it says that they're both boys, then it does, since we don't know if girl is a boy or a girl, um then we might not know if it's actually if you're saying it's actually true because we're just thinking probably like from the reading because the reading could be wrong. Yes. Good job, Lacey. You get a thumbs up too. All right. Just because one person likes something, we cannot assume everybody likes it. So with inductive thinking, we have to be careful. The other thinking is deductive thinking. Have you ever heard of Sherlock Holmes? Type in the chat box, yes or no. Donnie has. Samuel says yes, but never watched it. Sean is saying yes. Anne saying yes. Sydney, yes. Oh, Ellie, you can look at the next audiobook for Sherlock Holmes. Casey says yes. I like Lacey says yes, but never watched. Sherlock Holmes is a detective who is a fictional character in storybooks and now TV. You, he often solves mysteries for his clients. I would suggest you read or listen to the audiobook. What is a fictional character? That's a great question, Donnie. A fictional character means he's not real. An author made up someone in a story and we have read lots of books about him, but he was not a living real person. Like Abraham Lincoln is a historical person. He was alive and we can read books about him. Sherlock Holmes is just a character in a story. But Sherlock Holmes uses deductive thinking. That means he uses facts, he uses rules, he uses definitions, and draws a conclusion. Let me share my screen and find the right slide. Deductive thinking usually goes from general to specific. You can use the words certainly, absolutely. And it makes a valid or invalid argument. Let's look at some examples. Mark only owns green or blue shirts. Mark is wearing a shirt today. Therefore, Mark's shirt is green or blue. That is certainly true. It's absolutely true because he only wear, owns two colors. Let's try another one. Apples are fruit. Granny Smith is a type of apple. Therefore, Granny Smith is a fruit. 
Deductive reasoning says start with general. Apples are fruit. Granny Smith is a type of fruit. Therefore, Granny Smith is a fruit. Now, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we're going to jump to our riddle. I wanna make sure we have enough time. So let me pull up the riddle. As I'm pulling it up, remember, I can only answer yes or no questions. Nope, that's not where I want. My computer decided not to pull up the correct slide. Let's pull there. Here's the riddle. A man is found unconscious on the floor. His clothing is scorched. What happened to the man? Let me read it one more time. A man is found unconscious on the floor. His clothing is scorched. What happened to the man? Using the chat box or raise your hand, you can start asking yes and no questions to solve the riddle. Is there blood? No, Lacey, there's no blood. Sean, yes, he was involved in a possible fire. Ellie, he's not in the fire, but yes, there was a fire. Donnie, is he having a seizure? No, he did not. Lacey, is his body hurt? No, his body is not hurt. Uh, this is Leslie. I see that Samuel has his hand raised. Samuel, what do you want to ask? Um, I would like to ask if he was close to the fire or he, or he was like somewhere somewhere close to the fire nearby. Yes. Involved with it. Yes, he was close. He wasn't tending the fire, but he was close to a fire. Good questions. Lacey asks, was there a fire that needed to be put out? No, there was not a fire that needs to be put out. Samuel thinks this is interesting. Was he sleeping close to the fire? Sydney asked. No, he was not sleeping by the fire. Was there an enemy campfire or something like that no samuel there wasn't uh i this is leslie again i see that lacy has her hand up lacy okay so how what like were his clothes right beside him or scattered like a few meters away i would say maybe a meter three feet away okay so when you can confirm that he tore off his clothes no he was still dressed in his clothes they were just a little singed or scorched and no casey he was not dressed like a firefighter
Was there anyone around to see this happen? Was there anyone around? No, not at first. Lacey, those are great questions. Was it nighttime or daytime in this happened? <gasps> Lacey, I can only say yes or no. Okay, was it daytime? No, it was not. Was it nighttime? Yes, it was nighttime. Is he in the city, Samuel? Mm, I'm trying to think. Um, can you re... It doesn't matter if he's in the city or not a city. There's a better question to find out where he was. Maybe that's in a city and not in cities. Was he by a grill? Was he by what? A grill. A grill, no, he wasn't. But li everyone listen to Lacey's question. Was he by a grill? It might help to figure out where that fire was. Oh, was okay. he holding a torch? No. Was it a house fire? Sean asked. No. Was your, was his, was your fire somehow on his head? No, the fire was not on his head. Was he in a residential area? Maybe, Casey. But you th you're thinking too big, go smaller. Was it a fire for burning leaves? Sydney asked. No. Was he found in the bathroom? Was he found in the bathroom? No. But Lacey's got a good question going. Maybe keep trying to figure out where. Was he on a fire truck, Donnie? No. Was it an accident? Yes and no, Samuel. That's a hard question to answer right now. Was he in the kitchen? <gasps> no, he was not in the kitchen. Was he in the living room? <gasps> yes, he was in a living room. Is there a fireplace in the living room? Yes, there is a fireplace in the living room. Hmm. Could Samuel have actually caught his clothes on the fireplace? Were his clothes on the fireplace? No, his clothes were on his body. Samuel says, I know what happened. Samuel. I think, I think I know what happened. All right, Lacey, should we let Samuel try really quick? Yes. All right, Samuel, can you raise your digital hand and unmute so we can talk to you? Yes. All right, what do you think, Samuel? I think that something along those lines happened that he was in the living room of his house and then he had a fireplace on, right? And then because something flammable got close to the fireplace and then the fire got into the flammable thing right and then everything the fire got out of control and then that's how the fire went to his clothes by accident samuel you're on the right track but we need to figure out who the man was to help find out why he was in the living room so saw sean there wasn't smoke he didn't pass out he did pass out from the smoke, but not because it was a blazing house fire. Okay, yes, so there was smoke. There was some smoke, yes. Was it his house? No, Samuel, it wasn't. He's not the owner of the house. He break into the house. He, mm, yes and no, but he was allowed to be in the house. And yes, he was working, Samuel. Is he a builder? Is he a builder? No, he's not. Donnie, the fire was on. The fireplace was on. He's is working. He a, is he an electrician? 
No, he's not a cleaner. What did you say, Lacey? An electrician. Oh, an electrician? No, he's not an electrician. Is was your person home at the at the time of accident? <gasps> yes, the people were home at the time. Did the people see the accident happen? No, they did not see the accident happen. If there was a person inside, cops would have shown up. Was he ever identified by the police? You know, the cops didn't need to be called. And the people could identify the man in their house. So, was your man doing work on the house? No, he was not doing work on the house. He was not, Samuel, a chimney cleaner or an inspector. Was he... Were the people not in the living room? Like, were there two people not in the living room when this happened? When he first came in, no one was in the living room. Were the other two people involved in this accident? He did not rent the house. He was not a robber. And nobody else was involved in the accident. Okay, because I was thinking that someone could have pushed him into the fire. Oh, that's a good thought. And that's using some good critical thinking skills, but that's not the right answer. Yes, the people in the house, Sydney, were sleeping. <laughs> Donnie, you can't give up. We talked about that at the beginning. Is he the related to the owner of the house? No, Casey, he's not. He does not, he is not related to these people. Samuel, he didn't, he did not put too much firewood in. Is he married? Yes, Donnie, he is married, but his wife doesn't have anything to do with this problem. Does he have an ex? What did he get married twice? No, he does not have an ex. He's only had one wife. Um, was if if uh was he holding something while when the accident happened? Maybe he was holding something. Maybe I'm going to help. You all should start asking questions about his clothes. I'm going to ask him this, but was he wearing a giant coat? Was he wearing a giant coat? No, coat. Scoat? Coat, as in a giant tutu. Oh, no, he was not. Was he holding a paper thing, Samuel? No, he was not holding anything with... Uh, he was not holding a paper thing. I'm trying to think how to answer. Um, did he, was, did he have like a wood utility belt on? Mm, I don't think so. Was he wearing boots? Yes. Donnie, you have to ask a specific color. I can't tell you what color. What are Samuel, boots? What are boots water that? boots? He has boots on, yes. Purple, no, he's not wearing purple. He was not holding anything flammable. Red, yes, Samuel, he was wearing red clothes. Um, okay, so, I start, can you still hear me? Yes, I can still hear you, Lacey. Okay, so, Oh, Donnie might know who it is. No, Anne, he's not wearing yellow. Samuel, he was having fun. 
Donnie says it's Santa. Lacey, are you still there? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, if it is Santa, then my next question is, did he have a sack? Yes, he had a sack. Okay. Lacey, um, I think Donnie got it. Should I read the solution? Yes. Uh, yeah. All right. The twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house was the strong, smoky odor of Santa's red blouse. Tired after a long journey, Santa forgot to check a chimney before climbing in. A fire was going, and Santa was overcome by smoke. Upstairs, little Justin and Katie heard a strange thud. They quietly sneaked downstairs and peeked into the living room. Much to their surprise, they spotted Santa asleep on the floor. Unsure of what to do, they began tugging on his fluffy white beard. Santa awoke with a start, then managed to cough up a horse ho 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 ho. ho. After some milk and cookies, Santa felt better. He thanked the children and then magically disappeared through the front door. Investigators must discover that the unconscious man was Santa Claus, who had fainted from fireplace fumes as he climbed down the chimney. Good job, clapping and thumbs up for all of you. Was that fun? Type yes. in the chat box, yes or no. Yes, Donnie said yes, Sydney, Lacey, Samuel. Yay. I'm glad you liked it. Casey said yes. Let's see if anyone else, was there anyone who was thinking it was Santa right away? Hmm. Not me, says Samuel. Donnie was good, Donnie. Lacey said, nope. All right, excellent job. Let me quickly tell you about your extension activity. You will be given five items and you're going to list three ways to use three of those items. Your items are a rubber band, a flashlight, a paper clip, a carrot, a pencil. Give me three ways in the extension of how to use those. Then, Look and ask yourself, does this make sense? Is this good? Am I achieving my goal? Does the, which option is best? All day long, you are using critical thinking skills, thinking outside of the box, and evaluating, is this a good choice or a bad choice? Thank you for letting me teach. It was nice to talk to all of you. 
I'm going to wave goodbye and turn it over to Leslie. Thank you, Veronica. That was super fun. I definitely was following along and uh, uh, shouted answers at uh, Robin in the background. Like, oh, I wonder if it's, uh, I love a good mystery. Uh, thank you everybody for coming and participating. There was a lot of great participation today. Next time is uh, February 10th. We're doing personal passports. And the following one from that is February 16th. It's uh, skills for high school success. So those might be of interest to you guys. But look on the website. We have more being added all the time. Thank you again, Veronica, for this really fun mystery. And I think that's it. That is it. We are good to go. <laughs> what a fun session. So ha 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 and ho ho ho. Ho ho ho. That's what Santa <laughs> would say. Peace out. Uh, Lacey, we will, we're going to end this recording, but I will throw into chat very quickly where you can sign up for our next Excel Academies. We'll make sure you get that. We can stop the recording, Leslie. Uh, and let's see. And we'll the get... There's the button. <laughs> All right. I am throwing into chat right now where you can sign up for more uh, APH Virtual Excel Academies. I think I may have sent just the one for deductive detectives, but that will also take you right to the website. I think I've had that one set up to send it to so many students. Okay. Oh, we are still recording.